Welcome back to my Kawasaki S1 554 cylinder engine build. I'm just up in my shed rummaging for more parts to start building the bottom end when I realise I haven't extended the gear chain shaft or modified the sprocket cover. So that's what I'm going to do and I'll show you how I do it. I find the sprocket cover and gear chain shaft and take it down to my garage. I found an old bit of gear chain shaft from a Honda 50 that has the same spline so I'll be using that to extend the shaft. To create an original look, the sprocket cover needs to be cut and widened to fit the wider engine. Starting with the gear chain shaft, I insert it into the engine. I need to extend it by 48mm, but first I'm going to cut off a bit of the spline, so I mark a position in the centre with the marker pen, remove the gear chain shaft and put it in the vise for cack sawing. The gear chain shaft is made from very tough material, but the hacksaw cuts through it okay. With the spline cut off, I clean up the ends of the shaft with a file, then reinsert it into the crankcases to take a measurement. To double check the measurement, I refit the sprocket cover, securing it with one screw at the bottom. With the bottom screw tight, I insert the piece of Honda 50 gear chain shaft into the casing with the spline first until it touches the other gear chain shaft, then mark on the outside where I need to cut. I then cut the shaft down to length in the vise using my hacksaw. To ensure I get a really strong weld, I put a 45 degree chamfer on the end of the shaft in my lathe. With the chamfer cut, I grip the two pieces of shaft in my drill vise to hold them in line for welding. I use my TIG welder set to DC for welding steel. The drill vise is really good for welding two pieces of bar together. You can rotate the bar to weld all the way around. And the vise jaws have 45 degree cutouts to hold the bar central. With the welding complete, I grip the gear chain shaft in the vise and carefully file down smooth. I start with my coarse file, then I use my fine file, and I finish off with wet and dry paper to make it really smooth. And I'm really pleased with that. You can barely see the join, so I reinsert it into the crankcases, and it fits perfect. So that's the gear chain shaft modified, so now it's the sprocket cover. The first thing I have to do is mark the sprocket cover with a pen so I can cut it to make it wider. Then it will line up nicely with the chain guard when it's bolted onto the engine. I attach a marker pen to my scribing block with some tape. Then I can rest it on my bench and scribe round making the mark. This can be really difficult to grip in a vise, but I managed to grip it on one of the internal protrusions and start cutting. The cast aluminium cuts really nice, and I just guide the blade to cut a straight line. Then, I turn the casing round and start from the bottom, meeting in the middle with the cut. There we go, that's that in two pieces. So now, I can extend its width by 48 millimeters by inserting a piece of aluminium and welding it in place. I grip the parts back in the vise, true up the surfaces and file on the chamfer where I'm going to be welding. Tracy made me a nice cup of tea, so I had a sip, then I can mark out the plate that I'm going to use to widen the sprocket cover. I make two marks on my scriber at 48mm, then use my rule to join the two marks and scribe the line. The 3mm thick aluminium plate is just a bit too thick to cut with tin snips, but my hacksaw makes light work of it. I cut down as far as I can get, and then I rotate the blade 90 degrees in the hacksaw so I can proceed further.
With the blade twisted around 90 degrees, it's slightly harder to use the hacksaw, but with practice, you can still cut a straight line. With the strip trimmed to size, I put it in my vise to clean up the edge with my file. It doesn't take very much to get it all nice and smooth. With a strip of aluminium cut to width, it's now time to mark it out ready for bending. I grip the aluminium strip in my vise, lining up to the first line, then I use my set square to make sure it's vertical, and then I can pull it over just by eye to the right bend. There we go, that fits nicely. So now I do the next bend. Perfect, and now for the hard bit, bending the big curve. So I use the edge of my bench and gradually pummel the metal across until it bends into a nice radius. Well, that's the first curve lining up nicely. Now to adjust the tighter curve at the bottom and eventually it will fit just right. I then grip the centre section and one of the outside pieces in the vise, ready for welding. I do several tack welds and then complete all the welding. The outer part of the sprocket cover is then offered up for welding into place. With all the welds done, I grip the sprocket cover in the vise and start filing down the welds, nice and smooth with the surrounding metal. This can take quite a while. I start off with my coarse single cut file and end up with my fine finishing file. Then I go to the utility room to use the sink with some wet and dry paper, but I have a quick look in the kitchen to see what Trace is up to and she's not there. She's in the living room and she's knitting and it's a hat and it's for me. That's really cool. So on the way back through, there's some mince pies in a tin, so I take one. They are so nice. When rubbing down aluminium with wet and dry paper, I always like to do it wet where possible because there's less dust and also the water gets my hands clean. I start with 280, then I go to 320, then 600 and then 800 and then it's ready for buffing on my buffer. There's something really nice about using an old vintage buffing machine in the shed, especially in the winter when the light's on and it's dark outside. And I look up just in time to see the hedgehog go by. He must be really hungry. Well, there we go. It's all finished and polished and it fits perfect. So now I can go and have a nice cup of tea and maybe another mince pie. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And now I've got my gear change extension shaft and my sprocket cover. I can get on with building the bottom end. So I'll see you all soon in the next video.